In this video, we're going to be discussing the Van der Waals equation. Now, this equation is the first real gas equation that we're going to look at in detail. Um, and the best way to think about the Van der Waals equation is as corrections to the ideal gas law. So, of course, we're familiar with our ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT. And the best way to think about this is as a series of two corrections to the ideal gas pressure and volume specifically, right? Now, it, we've talked um, in the last few videos about, um, in general, what would make a real gas deviate from ideal behavior. The Van der Waals equation is an attempt to take into account some physical realities and start to, to model those so that we get a more realistic uh, version of the gas state equation rather than the ideal gas equation. Okay, so the first correction that we have to take into account is a volume correction. So here in this figure, we have two, um, two gas particles that are more or less colliding or interacting, um, particle one and particle two. Now in the ideal gas equation, since we use the total volume as V, we're not accounting for the fact that when this collision happens, this particle can't, uh, can't access the volume that's being taken up by the second particle. And the same goes for this other particle, right? And so basically we're ignoring the space that's taken up by other gas particles. And that may be okay when we're thinking about a situation where we have very few gas particles, right? So let's, let's say we take into account this situation where we have, you know, a couple gas particles sitting in a box, right? This might be a pretty decent approximation. The volume of the particles themselves is going to be rather negligible, right? But let's take into account another situation where we have a high pressure gas, right? That's really constricted, right? So let's say we got a bunch of particles here, right? Bunch of gas particles in this box, right? You get the picture, right? If we have a box that's crowded with gas particles, this becomes a poor approximation the uh, lower the volume is and the higher the pressure is, right? So, um, so this excluded volume has to be accounted for in some fashion. So in the Van der Waals equation, uh, we use this, this Van der Waals parameter, what we call a Van der Waals coefficient, B, in order to account for the excluded volume. So instead of having the volume in the ideal gas equation, we have the total volume minus the number of moles times B, right? So B, again, is this excluded volume. And of course, we, uh, we multiply by the number of moles because we're going to have to account for how many gas particles are actually in the container, right? So, um, so this particle can no longer move in this uh, region that's taken up by the other gas particles. So uh, we actually take, into, take that into account in the Van der Waals equation by subtracting this Van der Waals parameter B. Now, obviously, that parameter B is going to be larger depending on how large your gas molecule is. So the Van der Waals parameter for um, benzene, for example, would be much larger than the Van der Waals uh, parameter B for methane, right? Um, okay, so that's the volume correction. So we uh, corrected the volume uh, to account for the fact that particles can't travel in regions that are occupied by other particles, right? Uh, the next thing we want to correct is the pressure, right? Now, this one's going to be a little bit more involved, but think about it in this way. So if we have the pressure in, the, in, a, in a gas container is built up by collisions of gas particles against the container wall, right? So um, on this side, I have a container wall and I have one particle that's traveling to hit the container wall. In the ideal gas equation, uh, that pressure... Uh, is built up by these collisions and it's unimpeded. They're just hard spheres, so they're just zipping along and they bounce and hit a wall, right? Um, as far as in reality, right, we just saw in our last video that molecular interactions actually happen and these particles will be attracted to other, other gas particles in the container, right? So if you think about this collection of gas particles that's surrounding particle one that's trying to go in and hit this wall, right? These guys are going to be pulling at it, right? So that collision is actually going to be a little bit lighter than what's predicted by the ideal gas law. 
right? Because the ideal gas law doesn't account for this attraction. When this attraction happens, it's like these uh, particles are pulling that, uh, that particle is trying to hit the wall. It's pulling it back towards the center of the container using its attractive forces, right? So, um, so that pressure is actually going to be a little bit lower than what's predicted by the ideal gas law. So you can think of the Van der Waals equation is going to take the ideal pressure, which I'll use P sub I for the ideal pressure, minus P sub A, which P sub A is just the pressure that's accounting for the attractive force. Now, um, as far as this P sub A expression, right? So we have to account for this attraction, right? This attractive pressure correction, right? Is going to be proportional to the particle density in your container. So how many gas particles you have in a given area, right? So we're actually going to have the number of moles over V, which is our particle density, squared. Right, so this guy is squared because you have the um, the attractive force of the, of one single particle and the uh, the force of or the, the attractive force of the other particles as well. Right, so you have this um, this attractive force that this guy's feeling and the attractive force that it's exerting on other particles. So this guy is actually squared. Now, this is a proportionality statement. So we can turn this into an equation by introducing a proportionality constant. And that's where the second Van der Waals parameter actually comes from. So we'll have PA is equal to A N squared over V squared. Right. So uh, this Van der Waals parameter A is related to the attractive forces that are pulling at the uh, gas particles. And the Van der Waals parameter B is related to the excluded volume that particles can't access because it's taken up by other gas particles. So instead of having PV equals NRT, the Van der Waals equation is the pressure P plus AN squared over V squared times V minus NB equals nrt right so it's similar <clears throat> to the uh to the ideal gas law right except instead of having pressure you have this corrected pressure which is corrected for attraction and you have the corrected volume corrected for the excluded volume that particles can't access so this is the van der waals equation Right. So this is, like I said, the first real gas equation that we actually will study uh, in detail. And it's going to be very useful to us. Now, as far as how well it models reality, um, there are better gas equations out there. There are much better gas equations than the Van der Waals equation. But the Van der Waals equation is still very useful from a pedagogical sense because you can explain where its corrections come from. A lot of the other more advanced gas equations use, you know, uh, some sort of statistical fitting to experimental data. And it's less clear what uh, physical origin the coefficients in some of the more advanced gas equations have. But this one is clear and uh, physical reasoning for each of these uh, Van der Waals coefficients. OK, so let's go through an example of putting this guy into action. So uh, this example problem says calculate the pressure exerted by one mole of C2H6, so ethane, behaving as A, a perfect gas or an ideal gas, B, a van der Waals gas, when it is confined under the following conditions. So the first conditions we have are 273.15 uh, Kelvin um, in a 22.4 decimeter uh, cube container. Uh, and the second conditions are 1000 Kelvin in a 100 centimeter cubed container, right? So we have to do each of these scenarios for the ideal gas and the Van der Waals gas. So I'm going to split this up. So we'll have A, which is the ideal case, right? And then we'll have B, which is the Van der Waals case. So I'll put B here. Or let me give myself a little bit more room there. So B is going to be the Van der Waals case. And I'll abbreviate Van der Waals as VDW quite often. So 
uh, just be on the lookout for that. So Vanderwalls is VDW. Okay, so uh, let's deal with the ideal case first, right? So obviously we have our uh, ideal gas equation. So we have P V equals NRT, right? And if we want to solve for the pressure, then we just isolate pressure. So P NRT over V, right? So in the first case, right? So let's deal with the first scenario. So in the first scenario, we have we know we have one mole of our gas, right? So we'll plug that guy in. So we got one mole. And the gas constant, gas constant that I'm going to use is 0 0.08206. And this is in units of decimeter cubed, ATM, per mole, per Kelvin. Right? The choice behind this should be clear, right? Since we're dealing with these volumes in decimeter cubed, um, or at least for the first one, we're dealing with the volume in decimeter cubed. So I want to use this gas constant so that our units check out. Okay, and our temperature here is 273.15 Kelvin over our total volume, which is 22.414 decimeters cubed. Okay. So when you plug all of this in, you actually get a pressure of one ATM. Oh, actually, first let's uh, let's make sure we check our units out, right? So moles cancel out here, kelvins cancel out there, decimeters cubed cancels out here. So we are just left with ATM, right? Which makes sense since we're looking for pressure, right? So this is our pressure under the first conditions. All right, so I'll go ahead and box that guy in. Okay, so these are the first conditions, one. Now, the conditions for two, I'm not going to show uh, plugging in all of those numbers, but when you do plug in the numbers, you get a much higher pressure of 8.2 times 10 to the 2 ATM. Right, so that's going to be your pressure under the second conditions. Like I said, it's the exact same process. You're just going to plug in everything, except you're going to have a different volume and a different temperature, much higher uh, temperature and a much smaller volume. OK, so um, so in this case, right, we have um, a much higher pressure at the second conditions. OK, so now for the van der Waals equation. For the van der Waals equation, we're going to have to use these uh, van der Waals coefficients A and B. Now, these coefficients will either be given to you in the problem, or you can look them up in a table, either online or uh, in a textbook. If you have a textbook, these, there's usually a common table of van der Waals coefficients given in your textbook. And, you know, they're, they're always given to you, so you don't have to worry about solving for them or anything. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in everything we need here. So if we isolate uh, pressure in the van der Waals equation, then we get the following. So we have pressure is equal to NRT over V minus NB minus A N squared over V squared. Okay, so this is just uh, the same van der Waals equation that we just derived on the previous slide, right? It's this same van der Waals equation except you algebraically isolate the pressure. Right, so let's go back to this guy. Right, all we did was just use some algebra to isolate pressure here. Right, now I'm not going to show plugging in because I don't really think I have enough space. So let's just uh, let's just go to the result. So for the first one, if you plug in all of the conditions here and the van der Waals coefficients, you get a pressure of one atm. Now this is very this is a very interesting result, right? 1 ATM is the exact same thing that we get from the ideal gas law. Now think about why that might be the case. Um, if we look at the conditions that we're looking at here, we got a very mild temperature, right? This is uh, about 20 Kelvin below, a little bit over 20 Kelvin below room temperature, right? So we got a very mild temperature um, and a relatively, you know, spacious, um, you know, box for uh, one mole of gas, right?
Uh, so it, it actually makes sense that we the ideal gas law is a pretty good approximation, even accounting for the extra molecular interactions in the Van der Waals equation, we actually still get the same pressure, right? Now, for two, right, notice that we're dealing with a smaller container and we're dealing with a much higher temperature, right? That 1,000 Kelvin is going to increase the, uh, the pressure a bit, right? So um, when we think about, uh, when we plug in everything here, then the answer that we get is 1.8 times 10 to the 3, ATM. So under these more harsh conditions, we actually get a number that's an order of magnitude higher than what's predicted by the ideal gas law, right? So it's clear here that when we increase the temperature, right, when we're looking at a much more harsh condition, the ideal gas law becomes a much poorer approximation of the pressure for the gas right so this uh, these ideal gas assumptions start to break down and those molecular interactions that the van der waals equation is accounting for become much more important right so you can see that the ideal gas law there are points where it breaks down it's a good equation um but uh, and there are is limitations, right? And understanding those limitations of any theory and any law really is a big part of physical chemistry in general.